My name is David Smith, and welcome to Correctional Officer Lifestyle. Hey folks, it's David Smith at Correctional Officer Lifestyle. I am just now getting off work. It's a good day. It's 10 minutes to 7. Man, that's a good day. That's a good time to be getting off work as a captain. I'll tell you what. Um... We had a good day. We had a real good day. Nothing, uh, nothing too far out of the ordinary happened. Certainly no emergency situations. It was a good day. Okay. In that vein, I want to go on ahead and, and continue my topic of emergency preparedness. Now, I don't have a whole long time to talk about this because I'm in the truck on the way home but I'll do the best I can to talk about it um, in the time that I have, okay? One of the key things that you have to do as a correctional officer with emergency preparedness is understand the difference between an emergency and an incident. Okay, Webster's Dictionary defines an incident as anything out of the ordinary something thereabouts. That's not verbatim. An emergency is defined as a situation requiring your immediate attention that can be catastrophic in nature. Okay? That is an emergency. Now, we in the state of Florida, we have emergency plans. We have specific plans for specific types of emergencies, and they're not all inclusive. Okay, they're not all inclusive. You cannot possibly include every possible emergency that can ever possibly happen at a correctional facility. We don't have that kind of paper. We don't have that kind of bandwidth on a computer. If you tried to have a plan for every single eventuality that could ever turn into an emergency in a correctional facility, you'd never be able to write it all down. Which brings me to the point where the correctional officer, the one that's down there in the dorm, dealing with the situation when it first happens, has got to be able to be well versed enough with the emergency plans of your department or your facility to make a good, sound judgment call of whether or not that is an actual emergency or if it falls under an incident. Okay, that absolutely has to happen. And that is one of the main things that we teach in the Florida Department of Corrections is good correctional judgment. You have to have good correctional judgment. It's a must. Okay, because like I said, we've got emergency plans. We've got plans for just about everything you could consider. But at a correctional facility, and our colonel is famous for saying Murphy was a correctional officer. In other words, if it can go wrong at a correctional facility, it will. Okay? So, are all emergency situations covered? No. There's no way you can do it. There is absolutely no way you can do it. You have to depend on that frontline officer that officer that is there, that officer that is dealing with that situation as it happens, not looking at it from an outsider's point of view, not looking at it and saying, oh, wow, that's messed up. He's the one down there dealing with that emergency situation as it unfolds, as it plays out. That officer has to be trained enough and competent enough to perform his job admirably enough to get the right decisions made of whether or not this is an actual emergency. Um, some of our newer staff, they take this emergency uh, management system, uh, the National Incident Management System, NIMS and the ICS, that's the command structure, they take that to a very, very literal meaning where I have received an emergency radio call for a disorderly inmate. The officer was new. 
the officer did what the officer knew to do to get help to deal with a with an inmate that was out of out of order disorderly okay was the officer wrong absolutely not absolutely not by activating that protocol that officer got the help that officer needed absolutely not wrong uh, was it an overreach probably probably but the end result the officer needed help the officer activated the emergency call the officer got help as that officer grows in their career and in their field and receives the training from the veteran staff as well as from the training department itself as that officer grows that officer will understand more and more what is an emergency and what is not an emergency but it takes time because you can read the emergency plans top to bottom cover to cover inside out and backwards every single day you come to work and I promise you something on that compound will happen that is an actual emergency that ain't covered by them procedures I promise you that'll happen so we need to train our staff to be able to identify what is an emergency to be able to enact the proper emergency response and to be able to be in command of the response until such time as they are relieved of said command. That is in, in a very, very small nutshell what we teach in the department. So the person that I want in charge of the incident when the incident is first happening when the incident is first happening is that officer that's right there as it unfolds because that officer that's right there as the in, as the incident as the emergency incident is unfolding will know everything that responding staff needs to know when they get in there they'll know because that officer will tell them and it's just it's good practice now you take some of these newer officers and you teach them the emergency preparedness class that we teach them in the onboarding program in the FTO program and in the academy okay they that's what they'll know until they get to the compound and the veteran staff the veteran staff teach them the proper way to deal with an incident or an emergency. Not saying that what they teach in the academy is not proper, but what they teach in the academy is often not practical. It's not a practical thing. You're not actually going to be doing these things in the academy whereas on the compound and this was one of my favorite games when I was a rookie the sergeant that walked me around would give me scenarios and at the end of the scenario he'd look at me and say okay what do we do and it was up to me to in my head formulate a good correctional response through good correctional judgment to the situation that that sergeant just presented me with. That's important, folks. That is vital for the veteran staff to do that with the rookie staff. It is vital. It is so important. I cannot stress how important that is because the training that these guys receive, while it is amazing training, the onboarding, the field training officer program, and the academy is amazing training, it's always gonna fall short 
because it's not enough. We can't afford for it to be enough. There's not enough money in the budget to train staff the way that we need to train staff to do this job. Therefore, it falls on the veteran staff to train these people specifically. I can teach a brand new officer how to operate a dormitory, especially when he's alone bay dormitories, in an hour. Won't take much. Won't take much at all. But it's the level of alertness that they have to be taught. It's the critical thinking in a correctional environment that they have to be taught. It has to be groomed into them. And if we are not willing to groom our policies and our procedures and our emergency response plans and everything else into these officers, then we are failing the officers. As veteran staff, we are failing the new officers if we are not willing to teach the new officers what they need to know very specifically speaking about emergency situations and other high liability areas of the prison. That's all I got for this video, folks. Okay? Teach your staff. If you are a veteran of the department and you have a rookie with you, I don't care if you have an instructor certificate or not, you are a teacher. You are an instructor. That new officer is looking to you to teach them. Specifically pay attention to emergency preparedness because if it's going to go south, it's going to go south inside a prison. And the colonel at my facility is right. Murphy was a correctional officer. That's all I got for this video, folks. Remember, love shouldn't hurt. If you're in an abusive relationship, please find a way out of it. If you know somebody in an abusive relationship, please help them find a way out of it. If you know the abuser in an abusive relationship, remember the absolute worst thing you can say is nothing. Say something to somebody. And if you are the abuser in an abusive relationship, there is help for you too. All you have to do is admit that you need it and then ask for it. Folks, if you like the content of this video, if you like what you see, please hit the like button. If you want to see more, hit the subscribe button. Make sure you hit the bell for notifications when I post new videos. And if you want to leave me some feedback, you want to engage, hit me up in the comments. I do my best to read the comments, and I respond to all of them. It might be late, but I do respond to all my comments. That's all I got for this one, folks. Remember, I am my brother's keeper. I am my sister's keeper. Y'all stay safe behind the fence. This is David Smith, Correctional Officer Lifestyle. See you in the next video.